a couple of questions here. How does a doctor just fall from a hospital window? God, 52. This happened, uh, well, it looks like they updated yesterday. Um, but I think this is from a couple of days ago. It says, third Russian doctor mysteriously falls from hospital window amid COOF outbreak. Now, you got to ask yourself a couple of questions here. How does a doc just fall from a hospital window? Now, that begs the question, pushed? What was he, tap dancing on the windowsill? Was he doing a soft shoe? I mean, what, what the hell was he doing? All right. I didn't read the story yet just because <laughs> let's go through it. A doctor at an ambulance unit in Russia's western Voronezh region is in serious condition after falling from a hospital window following complaints that he was forced to work even after testing positive for the COOF, the third such case in the country in recent days. Let me read that again real quick. So if you read this this paragraph correctly, there's a doctor named uh, he was in serious condition after falling from a hospital window following complaints that he had to force to work. The third such case in the country in recent days. So three doctors on three separate occasions fell out a freaking window. Do you not... <sighs> Colleagues of Alexander Shuplov and representatives of the Regional Coronavirus Task Force said over the weekend that the May 2nd, Shuplov fell out of the second floor window at the hospital where he worked and was being treated for the coup in the town of Novoya Usman. He is currently in emergency ward room with a fractured skull. Hmm. Shuplov was hospitalized on April 22nd for the virus, but was scheduled to be released after his latest coup test came back negative. On the same day he was admitted, Shupalov and colleague Alexander Koyeskian issued a video complaining that even after testing positive, their boss was forcing Shupalov and his colleagues to work together. Forced him with a gunpoint? Kind of failed threats? I don't know, taking away your, you know, ration card? What the hell? Three days later, Shuplov retracted his initial statement about that. We've seen that in China. Saying that the, his video with Koyaskian 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 was recorded while he was in an emotional state right after he learned about his Kuf diagnosis. Shupilov is the third physician to Russia to fall out of a window amid mysterious circumstances during the coronavirus outbreak. Mysterious? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I mean, falling out a window is a mysterious because what? There, there's no context. It's just, oh, I fell out the window. It was the third one. Huh, it happens. Like, doctors fall out windows continuously all the time in Russia after complaining and they're retracting their statements. Hmm. On May 1st, Yelena the acting chief physician at a hospital for war veterans in the Russian city of Krasnoyarsk in Siberia died after falling from a window of her fifth floor office a week earlier. Local media reported that her name had fallen out the window while taking talking on a conference call with regional health minister Boris Nemec after turning one of the buildings of the facility into a ward to treat the KUF patients. Okay. According to the reports, Nepo was adamantly against the idea. <laughs> How dare you have an opinion that goes against the <laughs> the local mullah or the local henchman of Putin. Ooh. <laughs> on, on April 24th, Natalia Lebdeva, the chief ambulance center in the town of God dang, man. By a vowel. Zazinzhiv, Moscow. Died in what Moscow called an accident. <laughs> right. She was treated at the hospital for the COOF. Ren TV and the daily Moskovsky Komsomolets reported that Lebdeva fell from a window on a high floor at the hospital. 
Musk quoted Libdiv's colleagues as saying that she might have committed suicide <laughs> because she was accused of infecting her subordinates with the disease. Ah, uh, yes. Accused of a crime that she can't talk about because, you know, she's dead. <laughs> Russian health authorities said on May 2nd the number of coronavirus cases reached 134,000 with the 100, with 1,280 deaths and 16,639 recovered cases across the country. <laughs> and who... <laughs> this is... I mean... <laughs> this three doctors fell out windows. One's has a cracked skull. Probably won't be the same afterwards. The other two are dead. Could it be... Oh, I don't know. That they were pushed... Out the window, perhaps? Maybe so? Maybe? I don't know. But let's look real quick at the local numbers that we got today. This is from uh, ArcGIS.com, COVID-19 dashboard by the Center of Systems Science and Engineering at John Hopkins University. Now, understand that these are the numbers that are reported by the government, not necessarily the true numbers. Because you see that meme where, you know, man eaten by shark dies of COVID-19 or something like that. You, you get what my point there is. So if we look at my neck of the woods right now, um, 1,500 people. And then coming up for number, I think number two, that's this Peru's number three at 1,300. And the big one on the block, 7,367. Um, I actually want to believe Venezuela's number because no one's going to Venezuela. Because why? Now, there is a point to be said here that there is a problem right now, and it's in the news proper, that Venezuelans are trying to go back to to Venezuela from Peru, Colombia, and uh, Ecuador. Um, because no one's making any money here right now because they've sh pretty much shut the country down, relatively speaking. Same thing with the rest of the uh, countries that border Venezuela. So they're not wanting to... Um, there's no one, Like I said, they're not making any money. So they, they say, well, might as well go back to my family. And then... Colombia goes, no, we don't want you coming through our country and infecting us because Colombia has 358 deaths from the COOF. So they don't want to. And uh, same thing with Panama. Panama shut down 203. Costa Rica, 6. So whatever they're doing, I, I don't know if I trust all the numbers. But again, I don't see why, you know, Countries such as Ecuador, Peru, and Colombia would be lying about their numbers, even though there was some reports that there was many people uh, dying in Guayaquil, but that hasn't been confirmed at all. Um, there just seems to be mm, ambiguity, some distrust, if you will. But having said that, um, it's a lot taken from the word. I mean, I, I, I hate to be that person that... You know, whatever the government says, you have to completely disagree with and, you know, but you should, you know, I don't know. I'm in a weird situation where um, I'm going to be locked down until, God dang, until June, maybe even longer. So like I said a couple days ago, I'm going to be doing up to 80, day 80 apparently. So I'm on day 52 today. Day 80 is 28 days later. <laughs> How about that? Irony. Or is it a coincidence? Whatever. But um, if you go to like China and you go, where do they know? Where are their numbers? And when this, where this place, where this kicked off? Well, let's look at China. 4,600? Bullcrap. Check India. 1,500. Mm, okay. Mongolia. Zero deaths. Sparsely populated completely understand let's check in North Korea uh, they're not reporting numbers so you 
you don't know. Look, look, you know what's funny? Look at all the roads and highways and civilization, and then... Uh-oh. Nada. So that's that. Japan, 536. And topping out at number one, 70,000 deaths. Now, again, I don't know if everyone died of the coof. But, again, I don't think these numbers have been fleshed out. It could be more, possibly less. I don't think, you know, I think the numbers that I've seen come out of uh, people, the total number of people have died is by September or October, at least 120 to 130,000 deaths. Which sounds like a lot, and it is. But compared to, I don't know, people dying of car accidents and heart disease, you know, car accidents are not very happen very often right now because you know, not many people on the road. Heart disease is still going on. People are still eating like crap, like yours truly. But again, I, I don't, you know, I, I hate to just be that person that, you know, that bags on like, oh, those numbers can't be true. Well, they could be. And I didn't, like I said, I don't see why the part of the world I'm in where they would just, you know, cover up that number because they're the, the country I'm in right now, Ecuador, they're still a free country. I mean, they still have a free press, you know, relatively speaking. So the numbers could get out if that's the case. But there's, um, I, I just don't see, there's just too many, because the internet's still up, people can still come in this country, kind of. They can leave it, kind of. Um, so I, I just don't see how or why there would be a um, an active active uh, conspiracy to to fudge the numbers. I mean, they're doing the best they can. That's the thing, and I've, I've reiterated that point. It's just that that's just what it is. It's you know, it's a crazy time we live in. And so, but like I said, the big one here, Brazil. Um, I. Phew. It's nuts, man. It's um, in Brazil. It is some of the some of the cities right here, like Porto Alegre, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Fortaleza, Recife, Recife. I think Recife. Whatever. I don't speak Portuguese, but I think those kind those cities are highly dense, especially the favelas in uh, Rio de Janeiro and I think Sao Paulo. So it would. It would make sense that more people would die there because the population is more dense, like New York City. Who over here have got twenty five thousand of the seventy thousand deaths in the United States. That's a lot. And then Michigan and New Jersey got thirty thousand. It's um pretty nuts. Um, but again, like like for instance, Russia. I, I don't believe. There's just no way. Out of all the people in Russia, that's it? Mm, no. Don't believe it. And then like Germany, which doesn't make any sense because they're, they're butted up against, you know, France and um, Italy, technically, um, that have high death cases. So like for instance, France is at 25K, UK at 29 Italy at 29 and Spain coming in at 25k. And the what interesting enough Portugal is only at 1000 which is again it's there's got to be a pattern here and that's just, that's the thing it's just there's a pattern everywhere. You just got to think about that. And you know what makes you know one country shoot to the roof against another country that didn't shoot the roof. It seemed like, for instance, Sweden, who didn't really lock down, is only sitting at 2,800. Finland, only 246 and 215. Why? And, and uh, Sweden didn't really shut down, so... I don't know. I It just doesn't make any sense. Um, maybe, perhaps, it could, could it be genetic... Uh, racial that it affects only some races more than others. I don't know. I 
I don't know. All the stuff I've been reading, there's not a, there's not a good, um, you can't pinpoint it. You know, obviously one thing you can take away is high density, uh, populations in cities. It affects them more. And so like, if you look, for instance, if you look at, um, what's this country here? Eswatini, only one death. And then like Madagascar, zero deaths. Then you check these, these smaller, uh, countries out here, Mauritius, Reunion, the Seychelles, the Maldives, some French territories. So it's just, again, it's just not in the Caribbean. Let's check out uh, Puerto Rico, 99. Dom Rep, 354. Cuba, 69. Eh. Um, Jamaica, 9. And then I think these are the Virgin Islands, yeah. So, again, it's just one of those things where so far, we know that it affects the people who get affected. It's not necessarily, well, let's take it back. What we've seen in old folks' homes and retirement homes where, they, where they're locked in, in close proximity, it affects them. Just like uh, high-density population cities, again, affects them more. And if you look at like a state like South Dakota, which they didn't really shut down, they don't haven't had many uh, incidents. They've had cases, um, but again, South Dakota is very sparse, and you know, it is what it is. It, like I said, I'll end it there. But it's just it's just like I said, just trying to you know wrap your head around everything here it's just crazy it's like um for one it affects people you know in high density populations in the cities more than you know low density obviously that makes sense and they want you to stay home which doesn't make any sense and then you got the police you know arresting people for walking out their house but you can go to the grocery store and mingle oh but that's an essential activity an essential activity walking around and getting some fresh air that would make more sense to get out and get the sun on you just saying that's day 52 in a nutshell see you for day 53